Honey Comb Textbook in English for class 7 Chapter 2 A Gift of Chappals Page number 18 Before you read Mridu is a young girl growing up in Madras now called Chennai with Tapi her grandmother and Tata her grandfather one afternoon Tapi takes her to her aunt Rukumani's house to meet her cousins Lali, Ravi and Meena. A gift of chappals part 1. A smiling Rukumani threw open the door. Ravi and Meena rushed out and Ravi pulled Mridu into the house. "Wait, let me take off my slippers," protested Mridu. She set them out neatly near a pair of large black ones. those were grey actually with dust you could see the clear mark of every toe on the front part of each slipper the marks for the two big toes were long and scrawny mridu didn't have much time to wonder about whose slippers they were because ravi dragged her to the backyard behind a thick bitter berry bush there inside a torn football lined with sacking and filled with sand lay a very small kitten lapping up milk from a coconut half shell word meaning in this page scrawny means thin suggesting skinny toes page number 19 we found him outside the gate this morning he was mewing and mewing poor thing said meena it's a secret amma says pati will leave for our padu mama's house if she knows we have a cat people are always telling us to be kind to animals but when we are they scream oh don't bring that dirty creature here said ravi do you know how hard it is to just get a little milk from the kitchen pati saw me with a glass in my hand just now I told her I am very hungry. I want to drink it. But the way she looked at me, I had to drink most of it to throw her off the scent. Then she wanted the tumbler back. Pati, pati, I'll wash it myself. Why should I put you to trouble? I told her. I had to run and pour the milk into this coconut shell and then run back and wash the tumbler and put it back before she got really suspicious now we have to think of some other way to feed mahendran word meaning in this page pati grandmother in tamil throw her off the scent it means mislead her so that she won't understand the real purpose page number 20 Mahendran this little kitty's name is Mahendran Mridu was impressed it was a real name not just a cute kitty cat name actually his full name is Mahendra Verma Pallava Punai MP Punai for short if you like he is a fine breed of cat just look at his fur like a lion's mane and you know what the emblem of the ancient pallava kings was don't you He looked expectantly at Mridu. Mridu giggled. "You think I'm joking? Well, just wait. I'll show you some time. It's clear you don't have a thing about history. Haven't been to Mahabalipuram, have you?" he said mysteriously. "Well, when our class went to Mahabalipuram, I saw a statue of his tatas, 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 etc., etc. Fact is Mahendran here is descendant from that very same ancient cat a close relative scientifically speaking of none other than the lion the pallava lion emblem of the pallava dynasty ravi went on walking around the bitter berry bush waving a twig up and down his eyes sparkling this cat is a descendant of none other than the mahabalipuram rishi cat 
and if i may just remind you they worshiped cats in ancient egypt word meanings in this page tata grandfather in tamil descendant from a descendant of or comes from the same family page number 21 how he loved the sound of his own voice meena and mridu exchanged looks what does that have to do with anything mridu demanded ha huh, i am telling you this cat is descendant from the egyptian cat god no goddess bastard yeah that's it so well one of the descendants of that cat goddess was a stowaway in one of the pallava ships and his descendant was the mahabalipuram rishi cat whose descendant is ravi flourished his twig at mahendran mp punai here whoop eek he shrieked very pleased with himself mahendran looked up alarmed he had just been sharpening his claws on the edge of the coconut shell but worse than ravi's awful whoop eek was a screech from the window what a weird sound if mridu was startled mp punai was frightened out of his wits hair standing on end he bounced up and scurried towards a bamboo tray of red chilies that had been set out to dry trying to hide beneath it he tipped a few chilies over himself meow he howled miserably the creeching went on and on what's that noise said mridu that's lali learning to play the violin grunted ravi she'll never learn a thing the music master just goes on playing like a train whizzing on and on while lali's all the time derailing going completely off track word meanings in this page stow away someone who hides himself or herself in a ship or an aircraft to travel unnoticed weird it means strange or unusual page number 22 comprehension check question number 1 what is the secret that meena shares with mridu in the backyard question number 2 How does Ravi get milk for the kitten? Question number 3. Who does he say the kitten's ancestors are? Do you believe him? Question number 4. Ravi has a lot to say about MP Punai. This shows that choose from the following options. Option number 1. He is merely trying to impress Mridu. Option number 2. His knowledge of history is sound. Option number 3. He has a rich imagination. Option number 4. He is an intelligent child. Which of these statements do you agree or disagree to? Question number 5. What was the noise that startled Mridu and frightened Mahendran? Part 2. Mridu crept up to the window. Lali was sitting a little distance away awkwardly holding her violin and bowstring her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration in front of her with most of his back to the window was the bony figure of the music master he had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears and an old fashioned tuft a gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck and a diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin a large foot stuck out from beneath his gold bordered vesti edge and he was beating time on the floor with the scrawny big toe word meanings in this page glided means moved along smoothly Veshti means dhoti in Tamil. Stumbled means followed haltingly. Page number twenty-three. 
He played a few notes. Lali stumbled behind him on her violin, which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands. What a difference! The music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly into the invisible tracts of the melody. It was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whizzing along, as Ravi said. Mridu stared at that huge, beringed hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem, making lovely music. Swack! There was Lali's derailing again. Amma! Came a wail from the gate. Amma! Oh! Word meaning in this page. Beringed. The music master is wearing a ring. Page number 24. Ravi, send that beggar away, cried his mother from the back veranda, where she was chatting with Tapi. He has been coming here every day for the past week, and it's time he found another house to beg from. Pati explained to Tapi. Mridu and Meena followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden, making himself quite at home. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to take a little snooze while he waited for the ants to appear. Go away, said Ravi sternly. My pati says it's time you found another house to beg from. The beggar opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one. The ladies of this house, he said, at last in a voice choked with feeling, are very kind souls. I have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week. I cannot believe that they would turn me away. He raised his voice, Amma, Amma, oh! Sad as wail might be, but it certainly wasn't feeble. It began in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly and came booming out of his mouth, with its few remaining teeth stained brown with beetle chewing. Ravi, tell him there's nothing left in the kitchen. Call Rukumani. And he's not to come again. Tell him that. She sounded fed up. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar. What his mother said had been easy for them all to hear. There under the neem tree. The beggar sat up and sighed. I'll go, I'll go, he said wearily. Only let me have a rest here under this tree. The sun is so hot and the tar has melted on the road. My feet are already blistered. He stretched out his feet to show large, pink, beeling blisters on the soles of his bare feet. Word meaning on this page. Snooze means short sleep. Kept my body and soul together. Managed to stay alive. Fed up, tired and unhappy. Page number 25. I suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chappals. Mridu whispered to Meena and Ravi. Have you got an old pair in the house somewhere? I don't know said Ravi. Mine are too small to fit his feet or I'd have given them to him. And his feet were larger than Mridu's and Meena's. The beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and tightening his dhoti. He raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road, gleaming in the afternoon heat. He needs something on his feet, Meena said her big eyes filling. It's not fair. Shh, said Ravi. I'm thinking about it. Blubbering, it's not fair, it's not fair, isn't going to help. In two minutes, he'll be frying his feet on that road. What he needs is a pair of chapels. So where do we get them? Come, let's search the house. He pushed Mridu and Meena into the house. Just as she stepped into the veranda, Mridu's eyes fell on the odd-looking chapels she had noticed when she arrived. Ravi, she whispered to him, Whose are those? Ravi turned 
and glanced at the shabby looking but sturdy old slippers. He beamed and nodded. These are just the right size, he said, picking them up. Mridu and Meena followed him nervously back into the garden. Word meaning in this page. Blisters means boils or bubbles on the skin from burns or rubbing. Eyes filling with tears. Page number 26. Here, said Ravi to the beggar, dropping the slippers in front of the old man. Wear these and don't come back. The beggar stared at the slippers, hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder, pushed his feet into them and left, muttering a blessing to the children. In a minute, he had vanished around the corner of the street. The music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them sitting quietly under the tree, playing marbles. Then. He searched for his chapels in the veranda, where he had put them. Lali, he called after a few moments. She hurried up to him. Have you seen my chapels, my dear? I remember having kept them here. Ravi, Mridu and Meena silently watched Lali and the music master search every corner of the veranda. He scurried around, looking over the railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them. Brand new they were. I went all the way to Mount Road to buy them. He went on saying, they cost a whole month's fees, do you know? Soon Lali went in to tell her mother. Rukumani appeared, looking harassed, with Pati following her. Where could they be? It's really quite upsetting to think that someone might have stolen them. So many vendors come to the door, worried Pati. Rukumani caught sight of Ravi, Mridu and Meena sitting under the tree. Word meaning in this page. Unappreciative means disapproving. Page number 27. Have you children? She began and then seeing they were curiously quiet went on more slowly. Seen anyone lurking around the veranda? A sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows. Another straight, tighter one appeared in place of her usually soft, pleasant mouth. Rukumani was angry, thought Mridu with a shiver. She wouldn't be so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet, she tried to tell herself. Taking a deep breath, she cried, Rukumani, there was a beggar here. Poor thing, he had such boils on his feet. So, said Rukumani grimly, turning to Ravi, You gave the music master's chapels to that old beggar who turns up here. Children these days, groaned Pati. Amma, didn't you tell me about Karna, who gave away everything he had, even his gold earrings, he was so kind and so generous. Silly, snapped Rukumani. Karna didn't give away other people's things. He only gave away his own. But my chapels wouldn't have fitted the beggar's feet. Ravi rushed brashly on. And Amma, if they did fit, would you really not have minded? Ravi, said Rukumani, very angry now. Go inside this minute. She hurried indoors and brought out Gopu Mama's hardly worn new chapels. These should fit you, sir. Please put these on. I am so sorry. My son has been very naughty. The music master's eyes lit up. He put them on, trying not to look too happy. Well, I suppose these will have to do. Word meaning in this page. Lurking means waiting quietly without attracting attention. Page number 28. These days children have no respect for elders. What to do? A Hanuman incarnate. Only Rama can save such a naughty fellow. Rukumani's eyes flashed. She didn't seem to like Ravi being called a monkey, even a holy monkey. She stood stiff and straight by the front door. 
It was clear she wanted him to leave quickly. When he had clattered off in his new chappals, she said, Mridu, come in and have some tiffin. Honestly, how do you children think of such things? Thank God your Gopu Mama doesn't wear his chappals to work. As she walked towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena, she suddenly began to laugh. But he's always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and socks and get into his chapels as soon as he comes home. What's your mama going to say this evening when I tell him I gave his chapels to the music master? Written by Vasanta Surya from Mridu in Madras, Goru Chakka turns up. Word meaning in this page. Clattered off, gone off noisily, with the noise or clatter of tuples. Comprehension check. Number one, the music master is making lovely music. Read aloud the sentence in the text that expresses this idea. Question number two, had the beggar come to Rukumani's house for the first time? Give reasons for your answer. Question number three. A sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows. What does it suggest to you about Rukumani's mood? Page number 29. Working with the text. Question number 1. Complete the following sentences. 1. Ravi compares Lali's playing the violin to dash. 2. Trying to hide beneath the tray of chilies, Mahendran Dash. 3. The teacher played a few notes on his violin and Lali. Dash. 4. The beggar said that the kind ladies of the household. Dash. 5. After the lesson was over, the music teacher asked Lali if. Dash. Question number 2. Describe the music teacher as seen from the window. Question number 3. Part 1. What makes Mridu conclude that the beggar has no money to buy chapels? Part 2. What does she suggest to show her concern? Question number 4. Have you children? She began and then, seeing they were curiously quiet, went on more slowly. Seen anyone lurking around the veranda? Part 1. What do you think Rukumani really wanted to ask? Part 2. Why did she change her question? Part 3. What did she think had happened? Question number 5. On getting Gopu Mama's chapels, the music teacher tried not to look too happy. Why? Question number 6. On getting a gift of chapels, the beggar vanished in a minute. Why was he in such a hurry to leave? Page number 30. Question 7. Walking towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena, Rukumani began to laugh. What made her laugh? Working with language. Question number 1. Read the following sentences. A. If she knows we have a cat, Pati will leave the house. B. She won't be so upset if she knows about the poor beggar with sores on his feet. C. If the chapels do fit, will you really not mind? Notice that each sentence consists of two parts. The first part begins with if. It is known as if clause. Rewrite each sentence of the following pairs of sentences as a single sentence. Use if at the beginning of the sentence. For example, A. Walk fast, you will catch the bus. If you walk fast, you will catch the bus. B. Don't spit on the road, you will be fined. Rewrite each of the following pairs of sentences as a single sentence. Use if at the beginning of the sentence. A. Walk fast, you will catch the bus. If you walk fast, you will catch the bus. B. Don't spit on the road. You will be fined. If you spit on the road, you will be fined. Number 1. Don't tire yourself now. 
you won't be able to work in the evening number 2 study regularly you will do well in the examination number 3 work hard you will pass the examination in the first division number 4 be polite to people they'll also be polite to you number 5 don't tease the dog it will bite you change these sentences by using if question number 2 fill in the blanks in the following paragraph today is sunday i am wondering whether i should stay at home or go out if i dash bracket go out i dash bracket miss the lovely sunday lunch at home if i dash bracket stay for lunch i dash bracket miss the sunday film showing at archana theater i think i'll go out and see the film only to avoid getting too fat question number 3 complete each sentence below by appropriately using any one of the following your options are if you want to if you don't want to if you want him to complete the following sentences by using the above options one don't go to the theater dash two he'll post your letter dash 3 please use my pen dash 4 he lend you his umbrella dash 5 my neighbor ramesh will take you to the doctor dash 6 don't eat it dash speaking and writing question number 1 discuss in small groups if you want to give away something of your own to the needy would it be better to ask your elders first number 2 is there someone of your age in the family who is very talkative do you find her him interesting and impressive or otherwise share your ideas with others in the group number 3 has rukumani done exactly the same as the children in your opinion then is it right for one party to blame the other question number 2 read the following a group of children in your class are going to live in a hostel they have been asked to choose a person in the group to share a room with they are asking each other questions to decide who they would like to share a room with ask one another questions about likes dislikes preferences hobbies personal characteristics use the following questions and sentence openings 1 what do you enjoy doing after school i enjoy dash page number 32 number 2 what do you like in general i like dash number 3 do you play any game i don't like dash number 4 would you mind if i listen to music after dinner i wouldn't dash number 5 will it be all right if i dash it's fine with me dash number 6 is there anything you dislike particularly well i can't share dash number 7 do you like to attend parties o i dash number 8 would you say you are dash question mark i think dash do you know answer no what this tall bird does on sensing danger from far is to lie flat on the ground with its long neck almost horizontal the enemy may not spot the ostrich in this position from a distance and it may be mistaken for a shrub or bush if the danger is close by the ostrich will take off and run though ostriches cannot fly they can run as fast as 
65 km per hour. If cornered, they give a swift, hard kick. An ostrich burying its head in sand to escape attention is a metaphor for people who ignore rather than face a problem. Honeycomb You were just listening to this audiobook. Production assistants Meenakshi Kukreti and Jagbandhu Jana Recorded by Bhatilang Lingdo Technical assistants Soumya Malik Produced by Ajit Horo and presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi India